Hello guys and welcome to Jones's podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to Jones's podcast on SoundCloud and also on iTunes. You can also follow us on YouTube. Plus the show is live on Fridays, okay? So if you want to join the conversation, just go onto my page, my Facebook page, which is Jones Awa and get involved with the live discussion. Today we'll be looking at the year of return Ghana 2019. What does it mean? The year of return Ghana 2019 is a major landmark marketing campaign which is targeting African American and diaspora to mark 400 years of the first enslaved African arriving in Jamestown, Virginia. And to put more flesh to the bone of this topic, I have two special guests, Moses and Mark. Let me start with Moses. Moses, the year of return, what does it mean to you? We need to go back and fix our country and we need to go back and invest in our country and we need to go back and be part of our country these are the points that i think need to be done because a lot of the times we stay out in the diaspora and we invest in diaspora and make the diaspora grow and we need to make our own country grow for our future generations because if we're not doing that they're gonna suffer for it so we've got to be that catalyst to move back and start helping the countries grow. Not saying that they're not growing, but some of our expertise can join with their expertise and make the country what it needs to be. Because every country that we see today that's lifted up is the individuals in the country that have aided it to lift up. So that's why I think we should definitely be returning for the year of return. The year of return, what does it mean to you? Not this is, I know that Mark is not Ghanaian, yes. um, but we're neighbours. Yes. Mark is Ivorian, also grew up in South Africa. He's actually um, uh, probably He's the, most, the, 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 the most experienced <laughs> African yes. out of all of us here because he's traveled all over the world. What does it mean to you, the year of return? I think it gives, it gives people a chance to go back to, to their home country and uh, pursue their passion, just like Moses said, to, to invest, to get to learn about their country, about the culture and... And to see if they can build a life there. As a diasporan, yes. you're here. You've lived here. You've lived here for yeah. over twenty years, as you yeah, say, Moses. Be, okay, yeah. same as myself. Yeah. And I think Mark is probably about fifteen years. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. about fifteen years. Okay, so over a decade. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Now we're used to the systems here, yeah. and of course, it's not the same when you're going back home. Yeah. And I've, I think that's been the main challenge mm. for diasporans. Yeah. I've been to so many summits. Uh-huh. Hey, those summits. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of summits. Um, trying to encourage us to go back yes. to the motherland yes. and yes. Yes. invest. Yes. Again, the system yes. is what throws us off. Yes. But you're still saying that we should go back yes. and rebuild. But the system is not conducive for the aspirants to go back to. Okay. With the system not being conducive, every system of every country is different. One. Two, I'm not saying that Ghana's system is perfect. Neither is the system here. Am I lying? It depends. <laughs> it's debatable, but it's not perfect. It's not <laughs> No, come on, let's have a discussion here. Yeah. It's not perfect in what sense? Okay. Because if if you're talking about education, not I think perfect. the I, I think compared to back home, the education system I think okay. is much advanced. Uh, it comes to um, the healthcare. You're saying that the education and the health and all that stuff, yeah? Yeah. But number one, health is good because the people in this country fought for it to be good. Okay. It didn't just wake up and be good. Mm-hmm. So if we want our health to be comparable or better, mm-hmm. we need to do that. One. Two, in my humble opinion, <laughs> the education is not all that. And there's parts of the education system here that are very good and there's parts of the education system in ghana that are good and parts that are bad but here for example we could talk about tertiary education here Mm -hmm. and the expense of it the the um, what's the word not inflation but when something's really the extortion of it okay do you know what i mean so there's loads of that also here in a lot of public schools when a lot of um the English people come out of those schools say in the poorer areas we can see that the deprived areas we can see that the education system, the education level is not that high because the teaching system in that certain constituency, let me say, area. is not that high. Okay, I'm not saying that Ghana's education is I perfect. Just, I was just about to throw that yeah. back to you. Compare the people in the rural yeah. areas yeah. to the ones well, in 
that's that is actually a perfect example. Example. What that's you, what it is. No, so, no. So, so, no, but what, can I think, let me hang finish. So my when I agree, is, with uh-huh. you, when I think you're right, okay, you're right. No, it's not an issue of being. No, right. it we is. Discussion. No, but it is because we need to get to the crux of it yeah. and see what's happening and how we're going to move forward. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you on that. But even with that, we're looking at how much each constituency gets in Ghana to provide that education. I think that's the real fundamental um, foundation of it that we need to discuss. Okay. Right? Yeah. So right now, there's certain schools in Ghana, like I was sent to Ghana for school. Right. Because my dad had worked in the civil service in Ghana, let's say, and he wanted me to have experience of Ghana. And also he wanted to educate me in Ghana for a while. So I was sent there. Well, he went with me. And I was sent to Achimota in Ghana. And that education that I had from that school has been the foundation for my life today. I can't even lie to you. Like my, I don't want to blow my own horn and say that I'm, inte- I'm intelligent, but my okayness <laughs> in life, I'm, it stems from that. I'm te- like, God is my witness. It's true. I can, and, and I can testify to that yeah. because I can tell about you know, your modesty. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like the mo- the rest of the Motown boys. <laughs> no, I, I do agree because yeah. myself, um, I, I schooled in Ghana, yeah. and I've always said it. The school I went to yeah. was so regimented, mm-hmm. and I think this is what has shaped me. Yeah. You guys are comparing. Yeah. Right now, you're comparing the education education system, system in the UK yeah. and Ghana, and I think one of the best ways to to see or to measure the value of the education system in the UK see how it's received mm. by other countries overseas mm, yeah. what I mean by that is that if you graduate yes. with, yeah. British, with a British degree yeah. and you <laughs> and you go overseas they will receive you with open arms yes. and that's how you measure the value of, a, of, a, of an Let education system <laughs> so what I would like to ask Moses yeah. is what steps or what he thinks yeah. should be done to to improve okay education system okay. in Ghana That's because perfect. because clearly when when we hear you speak and you say you studied there yeah. there must be something good yeah. obviously Mark's already assuming that we need to make it better we do need to make it better mm-hmm. every education system in the world needs to make their education system better even America was talking about how you're, you're jumping the gun I'm not jumping on, let me just on. let me just get to my hang point on. let me get to my point so you were saying that if you hold a degree from England you can go anywhere around the world yeah. and get a job or whatever it's Which respected is, it's respected yeah. but is it respected because of its level of quality or because of what Britain has done in the but world you haven't answered my question about the education in Ghana yeah. okay the education in Ghana for example schools like Prosec Achimota um, give me some Infanti Pim mm. Addis Ardell um, Every girls, Legon. Uh, Wesley girls, Legon. yeah, Legon. Mm. These schools have trained some amazing people. I hire people from Ghana, right? Mm. And there's um, GIS and SOS, which are international schools, and they use the British cur- curriculum. Curriculum, yeah. I've hired people from GIS. I've hired people from Presec. But you just said they use their British curriculum. No, in GIS. Okay. Yeah, not Presec. Okay. They use um, WASI or whatever they mm-hmm. have over there. And basically, I'm not lying. No word of a lie. My staff from Prosec are amazing. They will go above and beyond to get tasks done. They make the company more money. They search for more things like the the GIS students, not all of them, all of them bar one, mm-hmm. to be honest, I have to spoon feed them. Right. Like some of my staff over here. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say that, and that's just secondary level, isn't it? That's yeah. not even tertiary. Yeah. So tertiary, I think we've got a long way to go. Okay. And also rural, I think we've got a long way to go. But we do have some gems in the system that we need to acknowledge and that we can also learn from. Would you say people in the diaspora, maybe we're just, um, we just have a negative perception of of the country yeah. that due to our bad experiences, mm-hmm. we just, you know, tarnish the whole place yeah. as nothing works there. There's no infrastructure, nothing works there. Don't bother going. Yeah. I do believe that to a certain extent, not everyone, obviously, and... I would say the the media with the air quotes. You know, people are like the media did this and the media did that. But it's all, it is also us because we put a lot of the diasporas that come over portray abroad, not just Europe, but America and wherever else they go, mm-hmm. as second heaven. Okay. And better opportunities. But we that live here, but let's I'm not be honest though. It is though. It's not second heaven. So no, no, I'm talking. About, <laughs> I'm talking about the opportunities. It depends where you go. First of all, it, it, it does depend where you go. America, UK, 
UK. So what's so great about when you come to UK, you haven't got papers and you're trying to get a job? What's that? What okay, you mean? so now you're talking about. <laughs> hold on, you're talking so, about coming in through the illegal way. Okay, even if you, okay, okay if, so if you hold on, hold, okay. on, hold on, so if you come through the illegal way, then yeah. of course you're gonna have challenges because you're lost in the system. system. You're not recognized in the system. Correct. So therefore, for that particular reason, I wouldn't advise anybody to come here illegally. Hang on a minute. Yeah, I know I you wouldn't sell illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't advise I'm anyone to come here yeah. illegally. So I think maybe you need to differentiate yeah i think maybe you need to differentiate from the somebody difference. coming here legally and somebody coming here illegally uh-huh. jones is right <laughs> well, well said, well said. Yeah. yeah so illegally because of this pipe dream that is sold i believe it's a pipe dream right. a lot of people rush over here illegally yeah. and they get themselves into loads of trouble because they can't access health facilities mm-hmm. educational facilities etc even legally when you come in it's more difficult because there's a lot of people that get those visas to come and study, right? I was watching this Nigerian girl's YouTube the other day and she said that they get visas from Nigeria to come and study here and they expect to get jobs because they came to study. And I'm like, obviously the country's going to take care of its own people first. Okay. It's not you. That's that's first. Of course. Second, even the people here are struggling to get their job, let alone you. It's the year of return. return yes. Okay, and I'm sure a lot of um, people would like to go back. What should one expect when they're going back because mm. you go to the summit they're always calling for investors yeah. to come in yeah. okay and i think sometimes these summit as a Ghanaian, yeah. i feel like an outsider mm-hmm. going to these mm-hmm. events because i don't feel like they're communicating to me yeah. they encouraging investors foreign investors to come, come in jones this one dear <laughs> I 100% agree with you on these these summits because I've been to a lot of these summits. I think I've even been to some with you before and they try to portray, they say, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Come and invest in this. Come and invest in that. But they're not telling people the guidelines and the culture and the system of how to invest. So some people come and get burnt and it becomes a bad experience for them because they're not, they're not getting to the nitty gritty for the true investor to come in. Because if you come in and you don't know the terrain, best believe you're going to come back with zero. We all know, has that not happened to a lot of people we know? There was that Jamaican lady, do you remember? Yes. Yeah, that she went to... The one one that went to build a school in Ghana. Correct. And she got burnt very badly by many of our systems from judiciary, executive, etc. And the reason why is because she went blindly, unfortunately. I feel sorry to say that. Okay, but then most, let me just pull you, um, pull you up on this. You yeah. said she got burned by the system. She did. Okay, but just before, just a minute ago, you yeah. also said that, you know, you rather live in Ghana than live... We haven't got hold on, hold on. <laughs> Maybe off the record. Yeah. Before we came on, before yeah. we came on. You've touched on the, the fact that yeah. um, you rather live in Ghana than live 100%. in the UK. You think Ghana is far, far better than the UK. But then yeah. you've just mentioned that the lady got burned 100%. by the system. Yes. If the yes. system, <laughs> if you're saying that she got burned by the system, yes. then why should people go back? Totally. Jones... Once again, (laughs) you are right. But the reason why people should go back is they should, number one, if they really want to go back and invest, they need to educate themselves and equip themselves on different levels from different stratas of life. Such as? Such as. (laughs) The way Jones looked at me made me laugh, sorry. (laughs) Such as how the judiciary works in Ghana, how the executive works in Ghana, how whatever business they want to get into Who's been in it before? Can they learn from someone that's already doing it in Ghana? Can they shadow someone? Shouldn't they be a, a business partnership if that's what you want to pursue in Ghana? Shouldn't, shouldn't, what I mean by that is that if someone wants to invest in Ghana, mm-hmm. this is an idea that yeah. you're, you're p- partnered up with somebody who knows the terrain. Yeah. You know? Correct. And what Mark said there is great. That's a great initiative. But as I said, and we were talking about the summits. This is how this came up. Yeah. They don't say these things. They'll just be like, oh, we're building a railway station here. We're building a hospital here. We're building, what's those drones here? So come and build a house near. And you know, like, I don't agree with that. 
Mark, let me bring you in here for a minute because um, um, as, as I did mention, Mark is Ivorian, but Mark also grew up in South Africa. He knows South Africa very well. And last, <laughs> I think um, a couple of years ago, uh, Mark actually left the UK and went and lived in South Africa for one year. Um, just tell us what the experience was like, you know, moving from here and going to South Africa. It was a mixture of a lot of emotions. It was exciting because I was going back to a place where I went to school, where I grew up. So I was quite excited. And uh, I've gone to school there, but I've never worked there. So it was quite exciting to do that. Um, in terms of the experience, uh, look, it was very different because I've been here for over 10 years now. So going back, I have to say that I had to get used to the lifestyle, the let's say a non-European lifestyle. Um, here we have a way of living, a way of thinking that is different. It, it doesn't mean that it's worse or better, but it's just a different mentality, a different mindset. So I think getting used to the mindset of the people in terms of in business, in work every day, that was a bit of a challenge. Um, but I think it's, you know, you that's probably the most important thing getting getting ready getting used or getting used to the mindset and and uh being able to to uh engage with people and i think it's quite similar to what um moses said about knowing the terrain i think that also means knowing the way people think mm. okay so moving to a different country especially africa i think that's the main that's the main thing. <laughs> I want us to touch on that. The way people think. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously you said you grew up there, yeah. but that was your first time going back there to work. And of course, most um, people in the diaspora who want to go back, yeah. relocate back to their motherland, is going back there to work. And I want to know you, the experience, mm -hmm. especially in the working environment. Mm -hmm. You're living in London, you've got the tube, transports and all things like that. But there, you're driving. Wherever you have to get to, you have to drive. So that's one thing that's very different. You need a car. Um, uh, it's also, I mean, one of the best ways to, to. I mean, that's probably obvious, but to do business with people is face-to-face. -face. So you have a lot of meetings. Uh, you have to travel and meet clients, and it can be in the main cities where you live or outside of those cities. That's the kind of, the kind of work I had was sales. Okay. So I had to go to travel to nearby towns or villages and speak to, mm -hmm. to people to, about the, my products mm -hmm. and things like that. So that was kind of my experience. It was very different to, to the things I was doing. Moses, would you say to people going back, wanting to go back, right. because of course you've got your business yeah, there, yeah. should they lower their expectations? In what sense? Well, where you, you're, used, you're used to, um, you know, the structures outside. Yeah. And, you know, she, you don't want to envisage, you know, the, 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 what you have here. Like Mark said, yeah. in England, you know, transport, you have train, tube, yeah. buses, even Boris bikes. Yeah. You can use that to, yeah. to, to get around. Yeah. Whereas going back home mm. will not be the same. Okay. That, is, that is one of the differences. And I think you're right in the sense of, there are certain differences in different areas. Some areas it'll be easier. Some areas it'll be harder. I think it's like with everywhere. Like if I was to move to America tomorrow, if I was to move to Los Angeles, there's no tube there. But I'll make it somehow, innit? All right, let me read a couple of messages. This is from Sa Ngozi Abraham. He's saying that Zimbabwe have the best education in Africa with 96% literacy. Um, number and reading Zimbabwe education system is excellent better than the United Kingdom Zimbabweans are clever and smarter than the English can I just say something in but then, did he spell everything right and put all the punctuation in the right place yes it looks like it okay that means it's good then <laughs> <laughs> If you're wondering what we're talking about, especially in Ghana, it's the year of return, encouraging people in the diaspora to come back mm. to Ghana, to come back and invest in the country. Okay, so um, we're talking about the pros and cons. And Moses has made a bold statement saying that he'd rather live in Ghana than live in the UK, which 100%. my response was, mate, just denounce your British citizenship <laughs> and just go. Because to Moses, the British system... It's not working. It's not for him. 
Um, he, he's the greatest in the world. He doesn't yeah. think he's the greatest in the world. Yeah. In the world, he thinks Ghana is is the greatest in the world. I just just to further answer your question um, about my experience in yeah. um, SA. in in SA in Johannesburg, uh, what I will say also is that I I like the UK. I like living here. But what I will say is that engaging with a, with a different people group, uh, different nation. There was so many challenges, but when you overcome that, mm-hmm. uh, being there, working there, I was successful, yeah. and it worked out. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a failure that made me come back oh, to the UK. Yeah. It was I missed the UK, I missed yeah. the lifestyle, oh, I missed, okay. you know, this, uh, is, home for you. this is home oh, for me yeah. exactly. But there was something powerful about being able to have a breakthrough yeah. in a different country. country. Uh, so I can imagine this is probably what Moses's passion is all about: succeeding mm-hmm. in. In Ghana, in a different place than the UK. Mark, what you said there was like quite insightful. Because to be honest, mm-hmm. like I didn't know the full story of SA for you. Yeah. So that it was successful, but you missed the UK. Yeah. So I just want to ask, what did you miss about the UK? Well, I'd been here for a long time, so it felt like home. Okay. And also my wife is British. Okay. She's born and bred here. Okay. So she she agreed to come with me to Johannesburg and she, she was happy to do that. Okay. But after a while, uh, we missed it. Um, it's it's just a simple reason. So That's all. Did you exactly miss the, the city, family members. It everything. 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 Family, the city. Be and the thing is, I was happy to leave at first. So okay. sometimes it's just that you need time away okay. from from okay. whatever you're. So just just tell him the truth, man. You miss you miss hanging out with Jones, man. Just tell him the truth. <laughs> No, but then listen. But but then listen. I understand what Mark is saying. You yeah. know when you, you know you go back to Ghana. Yeah. Uh, for the for me personally, the first yeah. time I went there, I was all excited. Then after yeah. two weeks, I'm like, bro, I need to get back. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks, you know, two weeks. <laughs> I love Ghana. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love Ghana. Yeah. The only thing that makes me frustrated, mm-hmm. especially, is that how everything is politicized. Mm. And I feel as though people, our brothers and sisters in Ghana, look at us in the diaspora as foreigners. Yeah. Hey, nobody wants to talk, to, nobody wants to help you, or yeah. especially within the working environment. I think yeah. this is where the issue it is. is. Um, I totally agree with you on the working environment because situ- obviously I go out there and I do my own business so I don't really I engage with other contractors and whatnot, but not um, exactly I'm not in the work field 9 to 5 so basically I've had a lot of people who have said there's a lot of issues that they've had in a 9 to 5 in Ghana but then again there's a lot of issues here so it's just this Moses, I think I think let's not go into that. Let, let me read a couple of messages. This is from Joyce. Joyce is saying, "A year of return, 2019. How can that be? There aren't hospitals, roads. We don't even have common ambulance in Ghana." Wait, Jones. I like how you just passed the mic to me. Am I the spokesman? <laughs> okay, let me say this. Let me. You're let me. Mr. Yeah, I'm. No, we're, we're all Mr. Ghana, and you are Mr. Sa Ivory Coast. <laughs> What is what Joyce is saying yeah. is fully loaded, okay. and it's not entirely true. But I understand her sentiment. Does that make sense? Break it down. Okay, so there are hospitals in Ghana. There are wherever else ambulances in Ghana. Now, how many? Can I speak? <laughs> so, the hospitals in Ghana. To be honest, I haven't really experienced hospitals in Ghana to a certain extent. But from what I've heard, I've heard good and bad stories. Depending on your wallet. Okay. If you pay for your stuff, you get it done. The bed situation and the ambulance situation, I think is atrocious. Because yeah. as, you, as you know me, if it's good, it's good, I'll say it. If it's bad, I'll say it. Because when I heard that we had 50 ambulances in the whole country, and then you want people to come and invest in that. 30 million population. 30 million population. So just imagine how much lives and children's lives are being lost because of that. So that is horrible. And that did not come to light until the former vice president passed mm-hmm. away, uh, Emisa Arthur. Oh, really? Was it, is that when it came out? But, you know, I, I don't want us to concentrate so much on yeah. the negative aspect because yeah. if we do that, no one will even bother yeah. to go back. However, we must address these issues yeah, because, because if it's bad... If it's bad. It's and and I, I also think when they have these summits, yeah. I think these are 
the, the, the points that sometimes they miss yeah. because yeah. if you're going to Ghana you, you don't think of the healthcare yeah. you yeah. think it should be healthcare it should be straightforward is, yeah, it's very important it's very important if people go to invest there or go to live there or go on tourism there and something was to happen to them they need the adequate health to facilitate them let's read a couple of um, messages on here Joyce has responded she's saying if there were good hospitals in ghana our politicians wouldn't be needing to seek medical help abroad we don't have ambulance in ghana my uncle died of heart attack on the 23rd of april and he was only put in his car to the hospital and died on the way i can't go and live in ghana because we don't have the basics to be honest ivory coast is a little bit better well that's great to hear that ivory coast is a little better at least we can learn from them then i guess that's one point. Um, two, sorry to hear about your family member that passed away. And then three, I also think that you can't go and live there, but I would advise you, maybe have a discussion with your friends and see, oh, how can we make a change in certain areas that's lacking? That's what I was about yeah. to come to and escape my mind. Moses is of the belief that we have to go back and make that change. Make changes. Make changes. Yeah in ghana and i said to moses hang on a minute moses i'm not the one that's been sworn into <laughs> office yeah. i don't have the the, the public purse yeah. in my hand I, totally I don't have control over bank of ghana mm -hmm. okay so how it's do you how how do you expect me I, hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on <laughs> <laughs> how do you expect i'm not the one that wrote the policies yes, i'm yes. not the one that came and promised the manifestos i'm not yeah. however of course, when you speak of government, mm -hmm. is the nation, mm -hmm. not just the government in control. I saw an advert mm -hmm. on TV. It was around 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. on MTV, Mark. Mm -hmm. And this advert was done by an NGO in Ghana. Um, and there was a young girl. I knew because you can spot a Ghanaian. Yeah. Okay. And then she was speaking trees, saying that these guys came and built this borehole for us. Okay. And she was excited, saying that I don't have to drink this dirty water with these yeah. beasts, these animals <laughs> anymore. And I was just angry yeah. to see this on a UK television. Yeah. And then you've got the government, okay? I just, this was the time where the government they were talking about building cathedrals and yeah. all that nonsense. Hey, okay. <laughs> and I felt, you know, that's misplaced priority. Yeah. And I've also, I've always said that water, electricity, health. these health, these are necessities. Yeah. Okay. These are not luxury. Yeah. And if you cannot provide clean water, clean drinking water, yes. don't come and talk to me about building something. Yeah. We shouldn't sit there for outsiders to come and do that so my exactly point is said, yeah. my point is when they have these summits yeah. why don't you try and get investors to come into Preach. the healthcare yes. health system yeah. Yeah. because clearly that we, we need that we need it don't we don't need more banks no. we we don't need somebody to <laughs> we, we've got enough yeah. moses um i totally hear what you're saying in terms of um they when we have the summits they need to discuss a broader range of sectors um with what you're saying about um when i said that we should go and do it i'm just saying that we should go and aid in any way we can mm -hmm. because if we all work to get together collectively there's going to be a change even here with the nhs it was one guy that wrote a bill put it into parliament through an mp hold on and then before it was it was rejected many times yeah. and they fought it and they went for it and then they got it so if, for example, Kwame Nkrumah was in the diaspora and he was like, oh, there's this problem, there's this problem, there's this problem, I'm not going to go back and aid, um, was it JB Dunkwa, right, with the freedom of Ghana, maybe we wouldn't be free today. Sometimes, if Martin Luther King had decided, I'm just going to preach in my church and say, hallelujah, amen, paid, I've got a good life in Atlanta, I'm all right. Let, um, what's his name? And the civil rights movement hadn't happened, we might not be able to travel freely in America today. So that's what I'm trying to say, that individuals, whatever capacity that you can help, just try and help. Okay, so so maybe that, that brings us to the issue of sometimes we think we have to go through politicians to make yeah. a change in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, let me read a couple of messages. Um, <laughs> this is from Sir Ngozi Abraham. He's saying, Moses is killing Ghana. <laughs> Joyce, Joyce, 
Joyce, Joyce is saying, how can we go back and make changes when they treat the diaspora as foreigners? Their mindset, their mindset needs changing. Yeah. Moses, I strongly believe the NHS needs to be privatized. UK healthcare is okay. Kakaho compared to the rest of Europe. Europe. Yes. Joyce is saying, why should we return when politicians are sending their kids abroad to study? Yes. Double standards. Yes. Um. I don't think all the, the politicians are sending their kids overseas. They're not. There's like 200 MPs who are saying that they all send their kids to Abro to go and study. How many do you think? I don't know, do I? But it's not all of them. No, no. Yeah, but it's not all of them. Majority. Yeah. <laughs> but, well and then, the to be honest, with that, that, most of that is tertiary as well. It's not secondary. Am I lying? <laughs> whether, whether it's tertiary or secondary, yeah. that's not the point. They're sending the kids yeah. outside. And... The reason why they're sending their kids outside for a lot of tertiary, what I have realized is the infrastructure for tertiary is not as strong as the secondary infrastructure, the, the, the infrastructure that we already have. And, and that brings <laughs> us back to the conversation we were having earlier about education. Here yeah. you are, the politicians sending their children outside, yeah, that's abroad. Tertiary, that's one okay. part no, of the it's not. There's some. There's, all of them. How, how, how many? How, <laughs> listen, you, you hear a lot of you know uh, politicians or yeah. you name it sending the kids outside yeah. to do their masters. Yes, we we yes. hear all of that. And the rich, okay. the rich as well. And the, and the rich yeah. as well. Yeah. So for for instance, this. Um, Wait, Joyce doing a masters. I just want. <laughs> it's Joyce doing her masters. Joyce is saying, Moses, give us a figure. There's something with our educational system. Give us the figure. What do you mean? I don't have the statistics right now, so I don't want to lie to you and say this is the figure. But um, not all of them do, one. And two, the ones that do, I as I said, it's more tertiary because our tertiary isn't as strong as the secondary and the primary. Okay. Again, yeah. we're coming back to yeah. what we touched on, which which is the health aspect yeah. of it. And I think you touched upon yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Politicians, when it, when they're not well or their children are not well, where did they take them? Mm-hmm. Outside the country. But then you're telling us yeah, to go back. You're, you're telling us to go back. Yeah, but then there's other people that use the hospitals in Ghana and some of them work fine, some of them don't. And as I said... We hold on, hold on. The, the former Ghana president, Atta Mills, went to the US, correct? Yes, he okay. did, all right? <laughs> okay. He did to yes. the US. Most recently is the vice president, Baumia, Baumia, who Kate was in, in London. Him, yeah. All right, okay. So, you see, so when... when, when, when they're they, not saying, if they're not, it's an example. Exactly. So, that, that's my point. Exactly. My point, way. exactly. Yeah. And okay. That's, and that is what I was talking about before, about when the, some of the diasporans come over, they paint here as diamonds and gold on the road and it sends a message back home that i need to come to, to the uk to f- no i don't think you should blame the aspirants if the vice president himself is no, planning to no, come no, here no, i think at the end of the day we have to have a, a balanced argument yes. because when i worked in uh, south africa yeah. i worked in the medical sector oh, okay. so i was dealing with people who had diabetes wow. so i was going to see doctors and pharmacists and sometimes i would see doctors in their private um, healthcare, health, private uh, practice. I mean, and sometimes I was sent to public hospitals. Yeah. And I'm telling you, once you see public hospitals in Africa, and South Africa is very developed, yeah. the their hospitals are amazing. Yeah. But their public sector, it's not that amazing. the public healthcare, yeah. it makes you see how incredible the NHS is with all its problems that okay. we we like to to talk about and yeah. complain about in the UK. But yeah. it, let's, just that's what I'm saying, let's be balanced because mm. in general, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. In South Africa, if you want good healthcare, mm. of course you have to pay. You have to pay for it. You have yeah. to pay for it. Yeah. But when you talk about public healthcare, yeah. Yeah. You, cannot, you cannot you cannot deny that the UK have it Maybe going on. Yeah. Okay, so we, we've spoken about the negative aspect, yes. okay? And, um, and some positives. And, and some yeah. positives. <laughs> and I know that um, even though we complain... We still I go know, back. I mean, well, I I, I, I do complain. Yeah. When Mark went to Ivory Coast and yeah. Mark sent me some shots, I was okay. like, oh, wow, okay. wow. Beautiful. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Upon all the challenges, mm-hmm. the people there are still happy. Yeah. The people there are still enjoying life. Yeah. And then when you go back, you can tell the difference because as soon as you touch home, home is home, right? Yeah. So that's why, look, yeah. um, off the record, I was saying some things, you know, like I said to you, um, as far as I'm concerned, I see I see going back to to Ivory Coast or going back to Africa again. 
as just a, a holiday mm. trip and for for the for those reasons that we've mentioned yeah um it's beautiful but there's a lot of for me the mindset and bureaucracy and yeah. those things you have to get through them mm. and I, i think also when the lady joyce said yeah. mentioned all those different uh challenges roads and mm-hmm. hospitals mm-hmm. and things like that i think it all comes down to to a mindset i mean it's not a priority on yeah. people's minds yeah. people in power yeah. because if it is then it's fixed it's like you said earlier on mm. why are they shouting that they're providing certain resources what was mm. it was it uh, ambulances or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. and they want us to clap for them but hang on this should be That's a priority cool. yeah, yeah so health. yeah on health as i said i don't deny that fact but as i was saying to joyce all those points that you've put joyce are great because as i said there were people before sitting in the diaspora that went to aid and changed the face of Ghana and maybe you've seen these things and you've seen them clearly and you may know someone that can help you never know because as i said if Kwame Nkrumah sat in the diaspora we might not be independent but i want to know <laughs> Moses how you overcome that mindset during the time that i've traveled to africa yeah. some of the biggest challenges i've had is the african mindset how they run things yeah i love that how how they run things cuz i i've learned now tonight that you have no problem <laughs> on the african terrain let me, let me. and although i had a successful time <laughs> what i did see what i did see was you know in, in my fight in africa was really okay, trying well, to give me an example of something you saw and then i can give you uh, no 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 i want to know how i want you to tell me how okay. how how someone from the diaspora can overcome okay. those challenges like uh jones told us that someone's name was taken off <laughs> so so hang on a minute yeah how, how do we overcome that imagine you're on the ground in ghana and you're facing like the jamaican lady you yeah, mentioned yeah, 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 how yeah. do you how do you overcome okay. such things mark That was a genius question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can I give small background or do I have to be quick? Quick. Okay. So basically, I went back to Ghana a few years ago. I'd been telling Jones, in Jones, I, I, I want to go back, do this, yeah. do that. When I went, I did face a lot of challenges. Yeah. But business in the UK also I faced a lot of challenges. Yeah. Different challenges. But I had someone on the ground to aid me who was my contractor who aids me in my business and um I have a militant style <laughs> of doing business and I think that aided me in getting things done like I put up a structure within 3 months in Ghana because I knew where to go who to speak to how to speak to them if they didn't do it I deduct your wages etc like yeah. that's how I was and once again my main um antidote My main antidote to getting things done in Ghana was asking people on the ground. Because if they know the terrain, they understand they understand the mindset that you don't understand. <laughs> they understand the mindset that you don't understand. What's the mindset? Money. <laughs> And also, it's not just money though, because sometimes they can be slow and waste your time and go and come and late for meetings and yada yada yada. it's a whole culture out there so you have to navigate it and have someone on the ground in your field especially if you want to go into farming find someone in farming go to the go to the high commission and say you want to get into farming is there any businesses that you can shadow because these are the things that will teach you what to do and how to overcome let me read a couple of messages um this is from Joyce Joyce is saying Moses my brother is in Ghana right now helping develop Ghana but i need to see more before i can go live in Ghana the inequality is huge mm-hmm. and then this is from Sir Abraham he's saying we need other africans to go to other of other african countries outside of Ghana we need africans to go back to sierra leone tanzania mali liberia okay. and guinea we've come to the end of the show i say a big thank you to mark and moses and of course to all our listeners and people who were interacting with us as the show was going on don't forget to subscribe to us on soundcloud and also on itunes Whatever it is that you're doing, make sure you stay safe and we'll see you next week.